The control throws on the Photon are largely a matter of personal choice. I tend to go pretty far on the maximum throw of all control surfaces just to give the flexibility of maneuvering in flight. It's pretty hard to get in trouble with this plane uh, due to the large wingspan and length. So don't be afraid to dial your throws up pretty high. For the ailerons, I like to use about three quarters of an inch up and down throw. For the elevator throw, I like to use about one inch up and half an inch down. For the rudder throw, three quarters of an inch is pretty good. I like to trim my ailerons perfectly flat and parallel with the lower surface of the wing. A properly balanced plane will have the elevator parallel to the horizontal stabilizer or reflexed very slightly up. This means your center of gravity is in the correct location relative to the center of lift. Your rudder should be trimmed perfectly straight for your first flight and then you can adjust trim from there. The rudder to aileron mix is a very useful mix for beginner flyers and for people who just like to lessen the workload on their transmitter sticks. And this provides right rudder when the ailerons deflect for a right turn and left rudder when the ailerons deflect for a left turn. I like to use about a 75% rudder to 100% aileron mix and this gives good coordinated turns for my particular aircraft here. A useful mix to allow you to slow the photon down very nicely for soaring purposes as well as for landing in short distance is the flap to elevator mix. You'll notice that the flaps deflect down as the elevator goes up. So this increases the camber and lift of the wing as the elevator goes up and increases the angle of attack. I use a 50% flap to elevator mix. Now because I'm using flapperons for my receiver setup and the channel is available on my transmitter, I've also programmed in flaps and spoilers, or more properly flapperons and spoilerons. The flapperons are useful for slowing the flight way down, however it takes away a great deal of the roll authority because you'll notice the downgoing aileron has not too much further to go down and the upgoing aileron needs to pass the neutral point to actually provide any up aileron and induce the roll. This can cause some great problems with uh, adverse yaw, therefore it's critical to use rudder, whether manual or mixed rudder when you're flying in flaps. This is a very easy way to get yourself in a stall and spin if you don't know what you're doing. Spoilerons are useful to set the plane down in a much shorter distance or to bring it down in more of a hurry. This can cut the landing distance in half and you can in fact flare and land the plane with the spoilerons uh, completely deployed. It just requires a lot of up elevator and I use about 50% spoilerons. Aileron differential is a very useful setting for this in all planes as it provides the up going aileron with more deflection than the downgoing aileron. This ensures that the upgoing aileron not only pushes that wing down but provides more drag so if anything it tends to help coordinate the turn even without the use of a rudder. This plane still does require an actual rudder uh, but 15 to 30 percent of aileron differential can be helpful to help balance things out. For most planes it's recommended to provide two or three degrees of down thrust angle with your motor to help compensate for the climbing tendency a lot of planes have when power is applied. Doing so in this plane also serves to point the motor down into the landing surface which is something that's not advisable in this case. I've put a little landing skid but still I like to keep my motor up and out of the dirt and grass. One of the nice mixes Spectrum at least provides is a elevator to throttle mix and you'll notice that when I apply power to prevent the plane from ballooning and climbing excessively, the elevator deflects down. I highly recommend setting the brake on for your speed control on the Photon, as it will stop the propeller from spinning in flight and reduce the drag a great deal. It also helps to keep the prop from spinning on landing and I've in fact never broken a prop on landing by using the brake on my ESC. Do bear in mind that the normal rotate, rotation direction in a motor is in the direction that tends to tighten the prop hub. If you turn the ESC brake on and abruptly reduce power when the brake is applied, it applies a force that tends to loosen the prop hub. Therefore, tighten your prop hub well if you do use the brake setting on your speed controller. The vast majority of hobby grade ESCs on the market Today I use a programming card like this one. This is about $6 and it has a port where the speed control is plugged in and power if that's needed if your speed control doesn't have a BEC on board. And you just punch in the settings you want for brake, battery type, cutoff, etc. And then press a button to send those settings to the speed control. This is very handy. This particular one I've bought 
works with Hobbywing, Dietram, and Turnigy ESCs, most of them that I've ever owned. Uh, but be sure you check your manufacturer's specs before you trust me on this. You can also use the stick positions of your transmitter on some speed controls to set the uh, brake and other settings, but it can be kind of a pain in the ass, uh, but it is possible. And as much as we all hate to do it, it's really the best policy to do a range check on your plane before each flying day. And I like to orient the plane with the motor and electronics up here in front of the receivers, which I have a main receiver here and a satellite receiver here. So this is the worst possible orientation for a reception for this plane. Spectrum says to walk 30 paces away. I usually walk 40 paces away. Reception is good with the antenna upright and rotated 90 degrees orientation. Interesting to note though that when the transmitter is placed behind my body, reception is lost. Just for good measure, I like to walk another 10 or 20 paces back and continue to check reception.